Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This week, in honor of our June theme week, we're going to be discussing mosaics. Although this medium has been around for thousands of years, we're going to focus on some of the most famous examples from the medieval and Byzantine period. Before we discuss the works themselves, it is important to understand what mosaics are and a history of their use. Mosaics are pieces of art constructed of small glass or ceramic tiles called tesserae. In order to make them in different colors, gold or other pigmented plates would be pressed between the glass. Once the design was completed, the tesserae would be affixed to the walls with plaster. They would not be set flat, though. In fact, the tesserae would be placed at an angle in order to capture the flickering candlelight. This would have created a beautiful atmosphere inside the building. The earliest examples of mosaic art come from Mesopotamia and date from the 3rd millennium BCE. They gained popularity and were used extensively throughout the Roman Empire. Mosaics reached their peak in the late antique and medieval periods. The best preserved, or in some cases restored, examples can be found in Rome and Ravenna, Italy. This is where we are traveling today to explore three beautiful buildings. No examination of mosaics would be complete without a discussion of San Vitale in Ravenna. The church was dedicated in 547 CE by Bishop Maximian. It's an octagonal plan church filled with mosaics telling the stories of the Old Testament, angelic figures, Jesus, the Twelve Apostles, and San Vitalis with his sons. But the most famous pieces are actually of Emperor Justinian and his wife, the Empress Theodora. The most important message of this piece is Justinian's authority over both church and state. The emperor stands front and center. His head is crowned with a halo, but he is also wearing the traditional imperial purple robes. On either side of him are members of the clergy and the military. Most of these figures are holding important items representing their station, including weapons and liturgical pieces. By showing Justinian at the center of the scene, the viewer is meant to understand that he is one of the great Byzantine emperors that held immense secular and non-secular power. Theodora's mosaic isn't as politically charged as her husband's. However, that doesn't mean it doesn't make its own statement. She holds the wine for the Eucharist. This shows her as an additional leader in the church. Theodora is surrounded by her attendants, but not government or military officials like her husband. But the balanced composition mimics Justinian's panel, showing them as near equal leaders of the Roman Empire. The next mosaic site we are visiting is the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. Not only is it one of the four major basilicas in the Catholic faith, but it is also the largest Marian church in Rome. It is built on the site of a holy miracle. The Virgin appeared in a dream to a bishop and said that she would mark the site where she wanted a church built. The next day, the bishop went outside and saw fresh snow. It was August, so this was clearly divine intervention. The basilica was dedicated in 434 CE and features some impressive mosaics dating from that time and beyond. The theme of the art in this church centers around the Virgin Mary. This is most likely because of the miracle and the fact that just a couple of years before the basilica was dedicated, the Council of Ephesus occurred. The major decision of this council was that Mary was the mother of God, also known as Theokotos. Due to this proximity in dates, Santa Maria Maggiore features some of the oldest images of the Virgin Mary in history. The basilica also houses the reliquary of the Holy Crib and the holy image of Salus Populi Romani. There are a few groups of mosaics in this church. The first date from around the time that the church was founded. They are clearly influenced by Roman art with their classical stylization. Originally, there were 42 scenes from the Old Testament decorating the nave but only 27 of them survive to the modern day. Another group of mosaics cover the triumphal arch. These feature scenes from the life of the Virgin. Because of the early date, the mosaics help create the methodology for traditional depictions of Mary. However, the largest mosaic actually dates to about a thousand years after this one. In the 13th century, Pope Nicholas VI decided it was time for Santa Maria Maggiore to get a new apse. To decorate this construction, he commissioned a scene of the coronation of the Virgin. Christ crowns his mother, and the pair are surrounded by saints. The scene does not have a setting, instead they are surrounded by golden tesserae. This is meant to represent the heavenly plane, it is not meant for our world. It is possible that this was inspired by Byzantine depictions that became popular after the Crusades. Our final example is housed in the mausoleum of Gala Placidia. This name is a bit of a misnomer because Gala Placidia isn't actually buried here. Her remains reside in Rome. Gala Placidia is one of the most important women in the late antique era. 
She was the daughter, sister, and mother to Roman emperors. In addition, she was also the queen of the Visigoths, as a part of a political marriage. Galla Placidia was known for her political savviness, as well as her dedication to the Christian faith. The mausoleum was once attached to a church dedicated to St. Lawrence. It was built between 425 and 50 CE, at the end of Galla Placidia's life. The entire interior is filled with some of the best preserved mosaics from this era. One of the most stunning is the depiction of Christ as the Good Shepherd. This popular motif comes from the Gospel of John. In the symmetrical composition, Christ is in the center. He sits in a rocky field with three lambs on either side. But he doesn't look like most viewers are used to. Christ is beardless, dressed in a Roman-style robe. His body is twisted like a classical statue. When this mosaic was created, Christianity had only been legal for about a century. So it wasn't surprising that the artistic style was still being figured out, and elements from pagan culture were being reused in the new Christian depictions. Mosaics are a beautiful and unique art form. These are only three examples from history, but there are thousands more from several different cultures. I encourage you to check them out.